What's up, guys? This is Dave from The Disorderly. I'm joined by the lovely Ash to help kind of explain a horrible movie that I would never never be caught dead seeing, but she uh, she had some time on her hands. I was obviously busy living a life, and she decided that she wanted to go see Skyscraper starring The Rock. So how was it, Ash? It was interesting, to say the least. I was probably a quarter of the way through, and I kind of wanted to leave. <laughs> but it's definitely a action pack for sure you're selling it harder than i think i probably would have <laughs> because um the whole concept of ash's reviews probably will be movies that i refuse to see you know uh that i have spare time on my yeah, hands <laughs> to yeah, go see you know so we just have a different varied schedules we can't hang out together all the time so she's gonna go see these horrible movies that i just flat out you know telling me all about transylvania 3 <laughs> tell me all about mama mia 2 you know what i mean yes. so you know she's she's really filling this niche of just coverage for us that you know ashes shit bombs shit bomb saturday i, I don't know shitty movies. Sh- just absolute <laughs> shit so i mean ash is gonna fill this fill that great niche for us i think you know what i mean and uh probably in the worst movie theater in the Los Angeles, Orange yes. County area as well. So Yeah, so that, that didn't help my experience for sure. But going into this, I mean, I'd seen the trailer once or twice. I'd seen the big scenes a handful of times, but no real concept of the plot. And not that I really feel like anyone had a concept of what the plot was. I mean, well, uh, yeah, what do you no, think no, of the plot? No, because all I've seen is that a man is forced to die hard his family out <laughs> of a giant Takanomi. Uh, yeah, what? so this, the Khalifa building, wh- what country is this? Um, it is in Hong Kong. Okay, all right. So we start out with the background of The Rock. So he was a Marine <laughs> for several years. Shocking. Shocking. And then we start in a scene where there's a hostage situation where this guy is holding his family hostage and The Rock goes in with his team, blows But not out. The Rock's family. Not The Rock's family. Okay. Some, He's some serving dudes, overseas or something. Some dude in a cabin. No, they're in like America. Okay, so well, it's America like a Ruby dude. Ridge type situation? Yeah, exactly. So they scale down the back of the rock uh, back of the uh, mountain behind this cabin, like tiny little cabin. I'm like, really, you guys can't get this dude. They blow up the side of the of the wall of the house. Go in. They all have their um, red dots on this dude, and he turns around and he's holding his son. And the one guy, his friend, who shows up later in the movie, you don't know that, is like, I have a clean shot at the dude holding this like six year old. And the Rock is like, No, he's not armed. Everyone dropped their weapons. And of course, the guy then is wearing a vest and blows everybody up, including the six year old. Including all the family. I don't know who all dies, but he's hold- he puts the six-year-old down and then has the detonator and vest on. The six-year-old's right next to him. Uh-huh. And Dwayne goes, oh, shit. And then blows everybody up. Right. So then we cut to a scene of The Rock is on a structure looking awful and a woman who ends up being his wife. Shocking. Nev Campbell? Yes. Yeah, Nev Campbell from Screen. Yes. So shocking that the woman who saves his life is also the woman he then marries and has two kids with. So we then find out that he lost a leg. So he's a knee down amputee. Mm -hmm. Other than that, he seems pretty normal. He then got a job to evaluate the security of this giant skyscraper, the biggest skyscraper in all of the land. Mm -hmm. Bigger than any building. They compared it to every building that you can. Empire State Building, it's three times bigger sears all of it it's ridiculous i can't remember exactly it's called i think the pearl some rich billionaire in hong kong made it Uh so his ash has notes by the way i do so i didn't forget she's looking at notes the plot is so unforgettable (laughs) that ash is literally looking at notes just to just keep keep up with this plot here of just absolute trash garbage so he gets this like third party evaluation of the security for the building um for the size skyscraper Mm -hmm. to for an insurance company for them to then insure it's going to be the highest premium insured building in the tire forever so his friend his former marine buddy who was also in the explosion got him this got this gig so mm-hmm. he's nervous, whatever. He's like, I do this out of my garage. How am I going to do this for this big company? And they're like, oh, well, you were cheap. So they go to Hong Kong. His family and them are staying in the skyscraper uh-huh. in the residential section that has not yet opened <clears throat> yet mm-hmm. because it hasn't been insured. Then we get to the penthouse where the crazy guy who owns this building lives. And it's enforced with, you know, feet of 
titanium doors and fingerprinted and all this stuff. So, I mean, we continue to go into all these minute details and get a tour yeah, don't, don't of the skyscraper. Right. And who, when does who it cares? go die hard? It goes die hard. Um, so he's given an iPad that is the control of the security system. Mm-hmm. They then leave and then his buddy is texting somebody. We're on our way. So that he gets his bag jacked on the boat that they're going. But it ends up that he had it in his pocket. So they go back to his friend's house. He had the iPad in his pocket and his friend then tries to kill him. Completely out of the blue. So you have your first very aggressive wrestling fight scene between two former Marines. His friend seems fine, by the way. Like, physically. He's burned on his face and his neck. Sure. But he seems like he has all of his limbs. Hmm. But he also then tells his former Marine buddy that he hates him because he ended up with the perfect life of a wife that he met and kids. And if he, if the dude hadn't, if the rock hadn't made the wrong decision, this other guy wouldn't have just been formally, you know, medically discharged and then had a shitty life because he can't, I guess, get work. So he's doing corrupt security for mobsters and stuff like that. Okay. So he, so the Rock can't diagnose a cabin, right? And he can't make that split okay, decision so he, properly. He 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 effed up the cabin. Yep. But now he's being asked to like evaluate a giant skyscraper. Exactly. All right. All Makes right. sense, right? All right. So there's motive for the bad guy, and then what? Are, what? So what? What is the? What is the thing that the Rock is needing to provide whoever has his kids and his wife? That's what I'm not clear on. Okay, they were not supposed to be at the building when. The mobsters decided to catch it on fire. So his friend gave them... So they want to burn the building down? They want to burn the building down. What? Why? So probably three-thirds or three-quarters of the way through the movie, you find that out. Okay. They want a flash drive that was in his secure vault that has all of their bank tracing because he would pay the mobsters monthly, uh, the owner of the building, okay. would pay the mobster guys, his evil arch nemesis, monthly payments... But he engineered tracking to track where all of these offshore payments were going so that he could then turn them into the the agency or whatever to get them all put into jail, I guess. So the monsters found out that he did this, and now they're trying to kill him and get that flash drive. All right. So they're going to burn the building down and then pick through the ashes for the flash drive? Well... Or just to cover up the tracks by just just, getting rid of all the evidence? I think burning the building down was just a fuck you. Okay. They could have just ganked the guy. So the guy gets the flash flash drive they're all on top of the building on a helipad going to leave because the fire was set in the middle so they started a fire in the middle with powder explosives that is ignited by water Mm -hmm. so they turn on the sprinklers and start a fire (laughs) in the 98th level of the whatever okay the dude's on the 220th 20th level. Oh my god. All right, so hold on. I, yeah. Let's just let's just get to the part where the rock has to j- make the jump that everyone's saying is preposterous. Oh, it is completely preposterous. So he's on a um a construction crane. How does he get on the crane? He climbs up. So it's it's but on the building. Yeah, he's outside of the building, right? He's outside the building. He's in a building like next to it. So he has to go to another building. Yeah, he wasn't get, in the building. He wasn't when in it, it when it got. Yeah, yeah. okay. So, so he he's was, breaking into the building halfway up the building. Yeah, by climbs, jumping what thirty floor or something insane. Well, so he 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 has to climb the outside of this crane because the okay. crane itself is like locked. Which would up. exhaust like any other human being. And also world. remember here, he also is an amputee. Right. Well, so. So then he has so, more power to spread across his I other limbs. I guess so, but climbing up the thing you go, <laughs> that would never work for someone who has a quarter of a leg missing. Well, I don't your think. legs can't get sore when they're made out of metal. That is very true. That is very true. I uh, it. it just seemed ridiculous. So he got the crane part, the hook, mm-hmm. broke one of the windows, mm-hmm. and he was going to slide down the thing into the, the door. Like you do. Yeah, like you do. But then, of course, it falls. So then he just makes a running leap because the Hong Kong police are after him with guns pointing at him. So he makes the preposterous leap of I don't know how many. And then he catches it with one hand. He catches like a piece of the the frame. Right. And then magically pulls Is this up. not the same scene where he has to use his, his uh, metal leg to save himself? Different from scene. From plummeting to a death? Yep, different scene. Okay. So we have this. So this is one thing that made me severely uncomfortable. I don't like heights. So you have a lot of really great angles of falling to your death throughout the entire movie. Mm-hmm. So that's fun. All right. Yeah. That duct scene, tape also seemed pretty big in this movie. Him just yeah. duct taping himself. He also mentions it like three or four times. If, du- du- if duct tape can't fix it. Duct tape for the he rock. He uses it to climb out a window, climb down several 
several floors to jump between wind turbines to disarm the fortress in the penthouse. Mm -hmm. He uses it to uh, stop, I don't know, six inch piece of uh, metal that jams through his uh, shoulder. Just duct tapes it right up. Just duct tapes it right up. No problem. That's fine. You know, found some alcohol conveniently in the tool Did he drink the alcohol or he poured it into the wound? He did both. And then there was minimal blood because, you know. Well, there's a running joke in like the Rock movies where he like can't die or be hurt or something. Like he just bounces back. I think he does. Few people have talked about it. I think in Rampage, he just gets like he gets thrown. I haven't seen Rampage either, folks. Get it, believe it or not. Um, and so he gets like gouged with a piece of metal, something like that, and they just like oh, just rub some dirt on it. He'll be fine. I mean, he pulled out at least six inches of metal Ooh. that was in his um, shoulder. Shoulder. Like, yeah. And then he poured a little little you know clear right up clear vodka on it, and then drank not a even a brown liquor. No, it was um, yeah, you know smeared off. Yeah, and that's not going to work. <laughs> red and red label. Um, drank a little bit, poured it out, and kept kept going. All right, well. So he falls out of the window, or he loses, I don't know, whatever, and gets hung upside down by the ankle, by his artificial ankle. And, of course, then it dis- he disconnects from it. Yeah. But then he magically grabs it at the same time. Sure. And then pulls himself back up. I don't know. 10 floors. I don't know what athlete could pull himself up 10 floors. But then, of course, they, they do a very convenient job of like, oh, he's going like two floors and then, oh, he's magically at the top. Well, yeah. You got to cut away. Yeah. Then he's he's climbed the entire it's just place. just fine. Yeah. What else you got? Anything? I mean, I, the, the, the one scene that looked awful, mm-hmm. awful, just awful cgi nightmare was well two of the nev campbell scenes look terrible when he she like stabs a guy yeah he she stabs this dude with scissors in the leg and then there's another thing where they're falling down an elevator yes with the kid and it looks it looks horrible yeah so that's how he got his son who has asthma uh-huh. Oh, and God. is why they were back in the Raise hotel the when they weren't supposed to. Because he apparently ate something that made him start having an allergic reaction. Got it. So they're running through a smoke-filled building and this kid can't breathe. So he's like, okay, so here's what we're going to do. I'm going to put you in the elevator shaft. I'm going to cut this, like, four-inch wire. Right. It's the size of our Yeti water bottle or Yeah. Something. I'm going to cut this. And it's going to drop you through all of the floors that are on fire fast enough that you're fine. But you, what you have to do is you have to count to five and then you have to pull the emergency brake so you don't plummet to your death. Right. Well, so, you know, and that magically worked. Well, as someone who just just did the Tower of Terror <laughs> ride at Disneyland or World or basically they just rejiggered the old uh, Tower of Terror <laughs> ride. And you're you're basically you plummet for three seconds at a time, maybe, which feels like an eternity. Maybe it's two seconds. It, right. It's, it's probably not that long, but they were they were to plummet. I think they were supposed to count. They, this is what they did. They started counting after they went through the fire. So the fire started on like the One 90. Mississippi. Well, the mother's holding the little boy and it's like, okay, we're going to sit here. Ready? Let's count. Five, four. And, you know, they stop it at like the second floor or something. But yeah, so that was. Any, and that uh, was like halfway through the movie. It seems atrocious. Uh, yeah. No good Hans Gruber moment is uh, does the villain fall to his death backwards uh, from the top of the building or anything? No. Right. How, good question question how did he die you don't know no he did so he had his he had the rock's daughter and of course the main like the pearl which is a giant sphere at the top they're in this and it's basically a room full of mirrors for no good reason so that's a big that's a big part of the end of the movie they're all trying to shoot each other but they're just mirrors so you think someone's so it's there like conan and the barbarian yeah awesome. pretty right. much um so he's trying to throw his daughter through a hole in it that uh he blew up because he's dropping um grenades randomly and somehow the guy thought he was talking to the rock and he's like oh wait i'm behind you grabbed him kicked him through drops the grenade and then he falls to his nothing spectacular Mm -hmm. the spectacular point was after that where the rock gives up on trying to get out because the building is on so much fire he's just resigned to his fate he can't figure out how he does so he's holding his daughter Mm -hmm. and he's like i'm so sorry i love you i'm so sorry and they're just crying like he's legit like i i'm giving up the you seven-year-old I'm sorry, we're both going to die here in this fiery death. And of course, at the same time, the mom finds the iPad that controls everything and says, reboot. The whole running joke, too, this is ridiculous. In the beginning, she's like, I need daddy to fix my phone. She's holding an iPhone. She goes to the rock and is like, can you fix my phone? He's like, what do I always tell you on how to fix your phone? You turn it off and turn it back on. She's like, but I like when you do it. So essentially, at the end of the movie, he's like, so how'd you fix it? Oh, I turned the system of the building off and turned it back on and it just fixed itself. Just like Jurassic Park. <laughs> yes. 
turn it off, turn it back on, all better. And all the fire went out within like four seconds. So that's cool and super easy. I'm glad the Hong Kong police didn't think of that. And uh... the Hong Kong police did nothing the entire movie. They didn't even. They're probably scared shitless of a building falling on top of them. The the building doesn't even sway. Everyone is right outside, and no one's concerned about this giant building falling at all. Come a long way since (laughs) 9/11. That's what I thought the whole time. I was like, is this thing just gonna collapse on itself? Well, mm, you know, jet fuel doesn't melt still (laughs) beams. (laughs) Hashtag. You know. So, yeah, would I pay to go see that? No. Yeah, yeah. so we I would not recommend paying 15 to 20 dollars a piece to go see this movie unless you like shitty action movies. Not as good as Die Hard. No. The movie starring Plot really Rock. sucked. All right. But yeah, pr- pretty much good summary. <laughs> well, there you go. So Ash is going to go see horrible movies that I don't care to see. Um, you know, she wakes up early, you know, and she's got nothing to do on the weekends. She's going to go see terrible, terrible, terrible movies. Yep. You know, there's a weird Venn diagram of just absolute garbage trash and then stu- and then the other slice coming in of things that Ash wants to see. <laughs> you know what I mean? So, um, you know, she's going to be probably our correspondent for trash. You know, yeah. Just absolute garbage. Thank you guys so much for listening. Uh, check us out on Facebook. Check us out on uh, Twitter. I think it's Disorderly Media. Dis- yeah, Disorderly Media. I, I can never remember. Uh, go to the disorderly.com. And yeah, you can probably. Find everything yeah, go there. to the website. Go to the website, Disorderly. Mm-hmm. The Disorderly.com. Like us, subscribe, share. Yeah, comment, like our YouTube. Tell Ash how much you loved. Please, her suggestions of other movies. Send her trash movies that she I, needs to go see. I'm all for it. Please include any preceding movies that I need to have already seen. She was like, should I go see Mamma Mia 2? I don't know. I haven't seen the first one. Do you think it's, <laughs> do you think I'm going to, uh, I'm like, no, you don't need to, you don't need to see either of them. You don't need to see the first one. You're going to be fine. But the song is so catchy. I want to see it. Oof. Oof. Brutal. We'll see how terrible it is. All right. Well, maybe next week, guys. So yeah. uh, tune in again for Ashes. I don't know. We'll come up for well, Ashes learning. Saturday shit bombs or something. I don't know. <laughs> We'll, yes. We'll think of something horrible. Huh? Yep. Thank you, guys. Thanks.